Hi everyone. So I'm just following up today with Zadaxka after our interview last week. So what would you say have been um something you've been thinking about over the last week as regarding your type? Have um we've been thinking about the typing of EIE with L I E as a runner up? Um I I have been thinking uh about just how extroverted ethics may have been showing up in my life. Yeah. Um, the, it, uh, the thing that I've struggled with is because I normally see my, I see myself, I, I could easily see myself as either one. Yeah. Uh, when I was uh, just a little thing is like when I was younger, yeah. I was very, uh, I wanna almost say authoritarian with my siblings, not necessarily with other people. Yeah. Uh, so like, I really like video games. So we'd all be playing together and a thing that I used to do, which it sounds really silly now, but I used to like, let's say we're playing like a Mario video game, then I would actually like delegate certain characters to like a sibling. Like I go, you can only play with these guys. And I did it so that like people wouldn't argue over uh, like, oh, I want to be him, but sh but he's already him. And I would enforce it pretty strictly. Like, even when the other person wasn't there, I'd be like, you, you have to ask their permission or you can't play. And, like, that's carried over into other things in my life um, where I set guidelines that, like, I expect everyone else to follow, even if they haven't necessarily signed up for it. Mm -hmm. And I was I wasn't really sure where that comes out in either of those types. Well, I would say one thing which comes to mind from what you said is how you'd also enforce those rules, even when the people involved weren't actually present. Now that is interesting to me because that is maintaining a consistency of the rule, even when the actual need, the practical need for the rule was not actually present. Now, if you have an LIE, that's a type which doesn't value introverted logic, it values extroverted logic. So for them, they would only impose a rule only as far as actually were helpful to the situation for making things work. As soon as they see where it's no longer actually useful, they wouldn't try to enforce that rule anymore. They're reluctant to have those rules in the first place. Whereas a beta type, say an EIE, first of all, the idea that they're t more able to take charge, got extra sensation as a mobilizing function, but also that they would see it taking charge in terms of actually imposing certain rules. And, you know, it's not the the rules are relatively arbitrary. It's just that that create that stops discord. It's just there to stop discord. But once you created those rules, you understand those rules. You're upholding that clarity, even when the people, um, even when the people who, if they didn't follow the rules, would cause conflict, weren't there. That suggests a valuing of introverted logic, in my opinion. That the consistency is being prioritized over the in the moment practicality. Okay. Okay, and uh, yeah, that was that was the main thing I was thinking about. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> I've uh, just been like discussing because uh, I understand that any type can have like a a need or a thirst for knowledge uh, mm. on a, a deep level and that like, uh, 
And I did spend a lot of my life like actively going out of my way to seek knowledge. But I mean, I was in a situation where you probably didn't want to be stupid. So, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, like I compare myself to just uh, like uh Richie who was on with you a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, like I I know him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh and well we're pretty good friends. And an EIE would be a quasi identical, correct? Yes. With that. And I think that we like we come off as like completely different. I, I think it'd be very hard for someone to mistake us for the same type of person. Hmm. Uh, other than on like, other than like they both like music, hmm. <laughs> I think it's very hard to connect those dots. It, it's interesting because you, you both said you like music. You also wanted to have quite a public um, appearance in the creation of those music and in terms of what that could actually create for other people. So I found that was quite interesting. But in terms of the values, I thought those came across being rather more different. Than yeah. And there is um, the shyness with Richie, which I didn't really get with for you. Although that's something which I, I've known IEs who have actually had social anxiety. I've actually interviewed another one quite recently, though, privately. Um, it is something which does come about. But what would you say would be the main differences, or the differences which you think make us so that you couldn't possibly be the same? I... <laughs> it's hard to do it without sounding like you're trashing. Um, <laughs> um, I would say that I am much more realistic than he is. Uh, much more realistic about just like people and the way events are going to play out um he uh i think that he lets his feelings gloss over a lot of the realities of a situation like uh he brings up like the he wants to have the summer of love again like the 60s the beatles well the 60s is where all the drug addiction started that all the singers and stuff are singing about now. They were doing the same things back then. They just sang about it in a different way. They weren't as blunt. They were having massive sexual immorality because that's when the, the sexual revolution happened. So, mm -hmm. uh, but he tends to let his feelings paint things in certain ways. And I think that's like the biggest difference. Okay. So, the diff different parts there. So the realism you're talking about there seems to be in two two main kinds. So different ways of calling things realistic. The realistic the realism you're talking about there is one of seeing things in sort of a bright and more sunny way versus seeing things in quite a more grim or harsh way and accepting those grim realities. So that's one part. I think that part can be very much related to differences in value of extroverted sensation. I think for you, the harsher realities, the more controversial truths of it, you're more interested in, whereas Richie would rather have the more positive side, looking on the bright side of those sorts of things, which alphas and deltas are more likely to follow. The second thing is also the realisticness of seeing how things will play out, how things will turn out. Now, that could be introverted intuition difference there. An EIE is going to be introversion, tuition, create. So 
they are not inclined to ignore how things will turn out almost inevitably. Whereas an IEE or an ILE, um, their introverted intuition ignoring. So for them, they're more interested in the possibilities and what excites them about those possibilities rather than hanging back and see, and actually seeing if, if something is a bad idea to avoid it and cut it off. Many extrovert intuition leads will try out that idea nonetheless just to see if it might turn out differently. Whereas an EIE is less likely to do that. They're going to say, no, this is going to turn out badly. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do it. They're more cautious naturally in terms of outcomes. Okay. All right. Um, there's, uh, there's also the thing that he actually, uh, more so than me, uh, attends to what I would call the emotional atmosphere of a situation. Like he definitely pays a lot more attention. Like he's the one who tells me, like it's not that I don't know when I'm offending people. I I I do know, uh, but he is the one that's like if everyone's being happy, he'll do his best to like try to blend in, even if he doesn't feel that way. Well. I mean, I have no problem ruining the party if I'm in a bad mood or, and okay. yeah. I'll, I'll just say to that, that, so it's not that he differs from you in terms of emotional awareness. It's a, it's a difference in terms of one, again, the valuing of extroverted sensation versus introverted sensation, right? So extroverted sensation is more open to conflict and confrontation. Whereas if you're introverted sensation valuing, say delta and alpha, you're going to not want to upset things. You're not going to want to cause sort of hurt as it were. Now, the difference here is that for you, your extroverted ethics is going to be your leading function. And so it's something which is inert. You control it. You make it the way you want it to be. Whereas, for a demonstrative function, that's more contact, it's more flexible, fluid, it adapts and adjusts more. It's not going to push its own agenda so much. So you find when an EIE is in a bad mood, they're going to express themselves authentically. And that could very well disrupt the existing mood and replace it with something else, which is more charged or even more, you know, it could be more angry, it could be more severe. Um, now, Delta is not going to want to do that. They're, they'd First of all, their main focus is more about their own personal growth and development. And an IE is on focusing on their personal growth and development and realizing their potential while also being very aware and mindful of how they're being perceived by others. See, IE is not going to be someone who wants to rock the boat in terms of making people feel bad around them if they can help it. They're very aware of that. They're going to try to keep things positive if they can. Whereas it's EIE who's going to be actually more proactively uh, experimental with the mood around them to create different effects based on how they're feeling, what feels authentic to how they're feeling at that moment. And so they're far more likely to disrupt that mood. It's not that they've stuck their foot in it, right? They haven't uh -huh. you know, said the wrong thing and suddenly everyone's upset with them and they're a social pariah. It's more they're in a bad mood. Everyone's sunny around them, but they're not sunny. They're going to make it a different mood. They're going to charge it up. So, yeah. Again, I think it, I think it does make sense. Actually, I thought that does fit more uh, when you describe it like that. Um, and then my last, just uh, and this is just me. Not, I don't think I've had many much contact with people mm -hmm. of this type, but from what i've read of lsis i wouldn't necessarily want a person like that in charge yeah. of me or near me i could act i actually could see myself wanting to rebel and 
getting into a lot of arguments with a person like that. Yeah. No, I get that a lot with EIEs. Okay. And that you said in charge of me. That's the important point. An EIE is not going to get on well with an LSI who's in charge of them, who is just making rules that they're expected to follow. EIEs aren't going to just follow rules which are made for them. They're going to want to challenge. They're going to want to feel, they want to feel confined. So where EIE and LSI work well is when they have the same goals in mind. They actually have the same outcomes they're working together on. And the LSI and EIE have respect in their relationship. And what we have there is that the, the EIE has lots of the ideas, is a very passionate one who motivates people. The LSI works out how is that actually making sense to the detail, harrowing down the consistent principles behind what's actually going to be worked towards and making sure all everything which happens underneath falls into line. If anything, the best sort of relationships in EIEs and LSIs is not where there's a clear power difference, rather they're more on equal footing, where the EIE is able to act more like the in front leader, actually, the more is the face of the organization. And the LSI is more behind the scenes, managing all the systems, enforcing discipline where that is needed, but not just telling the EIE what to do all the time. The EIE has to voluntarily, you know, um, feel that the LSI has that sort of authority and it's part of their agreement and understanding. So, yeah, and the EIE doesn't want to just, you know, follow the rules the LSI sets down and LSIs except in certain circumstances, aren't just going to be dictators who end up being the boss of whoever is there in the relationship. <laughs> it's important to remember that an LSI, their extroverted sensation is creative. It's not leading. They don't need to be the boss. They, they have a good blending of actually how much assertiveness they need for that situation without tiring themselves out and keeping the situation you know, sustainable. Okay. Whereas the EIE actually needs to be or feel more like they're in the overtly dominant position because of their mob it's their mobilizing function. It's more inert, it's more stubborn. It's just not as capable. All right, yeah, that that actually fits with what I've uh, wanted from like friends and partners. I've always more so wanted uh people who would chart the course while I steer the boat. Uh, I've always uh, just felt like it would be that things go much better when I'm allowed to do like uh, when it comes to an ideal partner, for example, um, I wouldn't really want like a housewife who stays home and I don't know, cleans for me or whatever. I would much prefer to have someone who's out in the trenches with me, uh, but like not in charge of me. <laughs> like, a, like as my, it sounds kind of bad, but I'm almost like a sidekick then. The, the, the LSI type, which is happy to, you know, play the sidekick, they won't see themselves as a sidekick. Um, they'll be the, you know, they're the ones who sort of wear the trousers behind the scenes. And they don't let it look like that you're not, not the one wearing the trousers. But in some ways, they will end up, they're just more subtle about it. What I would say, though, is that, you know, an EIE, your introvert sensation vulnerable. You're not going to have that much respect for someone just wants to sort of caretake, you know, in sort of day to day stuff. Nonetheless, if someone isn't doing it, I wouldn't say that you'd be very happy doing it all the time. So, you know, the LSI would, the, the good thing about a demonstrative function for an LSI is that they, they see to those things without drawing too much attention to it. So just, you, you can basically forget about it. Um, the, but yeah, the LSI, Primarily, imagine a good, good examples of this. Say you take the Clintons as an example. I think that's a good example of an EIE LSI mix, where Bill Clinton was the one who was the charismatic leader and did very well as, you know, being the big charismatic president, you know, 
things couldn't really be stuck onto him very easily. He was <laughs> very well liked by people until controversies got in the way. Even then, he did, he did seem to manage quite well. Um, and Hillary was more as being the sort of more aggressive, but also more purposeful one to his side, who really knew her mind, knew what, what thing, how things, how things were going to be, and. When Bill was, you know, getting caught up in different people and appealing to different people's sensibilities and that charismatic sort of more emollient way which he could put on where he wanted, she was the one who was making sure things didn't stray too far from the course. Okay. Yeah. And she, it, it, it basically, it's, it's reducing all the ambiguity which in the eye you can get caught up in to absolute clarity in terms of where things are going to go. What are the brass tacks and never forgetting what the brass tacks are. Oh, and I, uh, I did, I rewatched uh, the last video and I realized I made myself sound like utterly pitiful when it came to relationships. But uh, what I wanted to clear up with that is that uh, I guess when it comes, when it comes to relationships, even romantic ones. Uh, it's more so that I wanted to avoid uh, feelings of weakness. It's not that I have been incapable of entering into uh, relationships. I actually, uh, I actually can maneuver around and I know how to get people to open up and do the one-on-one -on -one thing. Um, it's just, as a person uh, who, well, I understand, like, and a lot of people don't really understand what this means, but I understand, like, the power of, like, uh, gossip and stuff like that, like, people talking. And I, I see when you reveal certain things or too many things, it can give people ammunition against you. So it's not that I'm incapable of doing that. It's just that my, like in my mind, I'm like, well, if this doesn't work out and they don't like me, now they have this information that they could use against me. And I only know because I've done it before to other people and uh that that's the thing i'm trying well, to fix and yeah i see this is sounding again more like an ignoring function it's not a blind spot mm -hmm. you just don't place an in an intrinsic valued emphasis on it at all and you can also completely break the rules of it if you want to you're aware that it exists you know you know and you, you're seeing it more in terms of what people could use against you later. Your introvert intuition is working there, that caution in terms of the long run. Um, and also an expectation almost that people's allegiances and loyalties could change over time. And you're not really expecting it to stay the same. Whereas someone is more introverted ethics valuing, they would w want and expect it to stay the same. And they'll then get upset if it doesn't stay the same. The EIE is less likely to expect to stay the same because they see themselves as some with whom it won't stay the same. Their their attachments could change over time with their moods and emotions. And oh, kind of along that note, would, would you say that, because I'm very attracted to um, revolutionary like ways of thinking, like uh, like systems, of logic and I kind of just hop around and like I can wear the mask of it for a while and then like but it never feels like I solidly like have a grasp on what it actually is I just more so have the feeling of what the I mean I guess a good example is like I was a uh, I used to be very attracted to the um, kind of, uh, what's that like? Like the Fight Club, Tyler Durden, like <laughs> who cares mindset. 
of of life and uh like i appreciated it because of like just like the freedom of like emotional expression and all that but like when it comes to like the little intricacies or whatever like i didn't actually i have a hard time actually knowing what they mean like i know the information but i don't know <laughs> and it's kind of hard to explain uh and then like for like a week i could be like really into like anarchy and think that wow this is like the greatest political system ever <laughs> and then be a libertarian like two months later uh and like it's not that it's not even that like i necessarily change uh it's just that i don't know i i can't really put my finger on that one it's okay uh, i mean what you're describing does sound to me like introverted logic is valued it's just not in a strong position and and in the suggestive function the idea of this is that it's actually quite impressionable and it can easily it's looking for clarity it's looking for a reduction of ambiguity uh something to be draw things in the way which makes sense so eies can you know try out different ideologies different structures um trying to see what sort of fits and works for them they got good they got far more extrovert intuition than introverted logic so they'll see lots of different potential systems they don't necessarily know which one really fits together and makes sense for them and they'll but they want one they want to find one they want someone who can create the clarity where one makes sense for them in the in permanently they're just not very good at finding that and being confident enough in that to stick to it oh you paused hello yeah that's that's uh that's exactly what i was trying trying to say yeah um, <laughs> I, I just want one that makes sense to me. I understand how they can make sense for other people mm. and they all kind of make sense, but they can't all be right because they're opposing ideologies. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so that, that is something that I definitely seek. And that is a, a thing that I think it's, it's very hard for me to find people who understand and can explain their belief systems in a way where it makes sense and there's not like glaring holes in it. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, those are all the questions I had thought about. That's fine. In which case, in the meantime, would you be open to some questions maybe from the audience? Oh, yeah, no problem. Okay. Guys, if you want to ask any questions of Zadaxka, please feel free. Um, oh, let Leia ask. I think that's a question more oriented towards me. So does T. E. Roll explain why I was talking about business so much in the last video? Like he pushes the image forward as a first impression. Yeah, I think... That is something which um, I think can often happen, especially more with male EIEs. I think that there's an, there's an attention to culture, there's attention to what is perceived as the thing that's going to come across most well when they're putting themselves forward. And putting yourself across actually having information, having a, a sense of business practicality, that sort of thing, I think helps to create more of an impressive impression. So I think many EIEs will want to talk for talk in terms of extroverted logic when coming across. Um, and if you reverse it, say for an LIE with extroverted ethics as their role, they will know that for them to actually, you know, for things to work practically, they know how to be perceived in a good way. So they'll be relatively polite and uh, friendly around people. They won't come across as a complete judgmental grouch. So yeah you find the role definitely would be coming into play a lot here. And the IEs are able to use masks anyway. They're good at doing that. They're good at finding masks which work for them. Like, yeah, so that's, you already you said that you were to find sort of a, a mask in terms of being 
logically uh, committed to something or knowing what a particular ideology was. As I think, you know, buy masks and they essentially become the masks which they eventually put on if they carry on having that, they carry on being part of that particular mark, or particular image. And I don't really know if this ties into that, but um, I I really don't like when people think I don't know what I'm doing. I like to seem prepared, even if I'm not prepared. Uh, yeah, I, I do focus a lot on the image of the way that I come across. I don't like to come across as I'm just a really emotional people because really emotional people don't get listened to. Yeah. Normally, so you want to be taken seriously. If you want to be a leader, people need to take you seriously. So you need to have the impression that you know what you're talking about. So for an EIE, it's even more important than actually knowing what you're talking about. It's looking like you know what you're talking about, making sure that people don't, you know, get the impression that you don't know that because they're not going to take you seriously. They're not going to listen to what you have to say. And they're not going to look at you in the way which you want them to look at you as. Yeah. Okay, let's see if any other questions. Um, oh, Jordi is. I'm not sure. Uh, Jordi's asked it. There's, there's some stuff on Ash's video before which Jordi was causing mischief on. I'm not sure what that's about, but I'm not going to humor it. Yeah. So there. Um, let's see. Um, any other questions? Ah, Geordie's asking, um, how do you feel about being an EIE, the depresso <laughs> comedic identity crisis? <laughs> I mean, there's some successful ones. David Bowie's yeah. one. He's a pretty cool guy. I don't really have a problem with him. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess it's cool. <laughs> Very good. I think Geordie's also an EIE, so that's you know, <laughs> you know coming from a good place. Um Fate saying, do you believe expressing your bad mood is something you do often and is easy for you to do? Um when it comes to expressing my bad moods, it is a thing that I do frequently <laughs> um i uh, and then is it easy for me um easy it depends on the environment it's a lot easier to allow my bad mood to circulate if it's amongst people i know mm -hmm. because if i let it come out and I'm in a group of strangers, I just look like, like a crybaby or, or I look weak. And, and those are normally either just retreat somewhere uh, where no one's around so I can vent or I'll just like stick it out. But typically when I'm really expressing my bad moods, it's in the comforts of my home where all my friends just get to hear me whine. <laughs> okay. so I'm going to let my fiance in the house. I'll be right back. Sorry. No problem. But yeah, so that's pretty much uh, what I do. Okay. And sorry about that. I was just uh, laying her in. Um, no, good. Okay. So, um, any other questions? Hmm. No other questions at the moment, actually. Do any further up? Hmm. Oh, no, I saw one from there. Let's see if I can find it. Ah. Now, Leo was asking about uh, about weakness, not appearing weak. But yeah, I think there's again extrovert sensation valuing. Um, <laughs> ah, here we go. Here's one from Leo. So, how do you feel about business and pragmatism? Do you think of it more as a necessary evil, 
you get burnt out after putting your attention in it for too long? Um, when it comes to business and pragmatism, I do think you need to be pragmatic to survive. Like, uh, you have to be just like aware of your environment, the common practices and whatever business you're going into. I believe you should research a lot before mm -hmm. you dive into anything. Um, when it comes to like just direct business, I'm going to assume you mean just like running a business, things like that. Um, it's a thing I, I actually believe I'd be able to do. I wouldn't necessarily want to do it. Wouldn't get a lot of fun out of like the logistical day-to-day -day work of it, but I could do it. Uh, it's not necessarily a necessary evil. I think the actual necessary evil for me is um, having to befriend certain people to rise up within a system. Networking to me is the necessary evil of everything. That's actually the thing that I find most annoying mm -hmm. and aggravating. Mm -hmm. so. okay. uh, yeah. Why do you find that to be more of a necessary evil? Because um, I believe that there's more power found within um, most successful people, um, they get to where they've gotten because of networking. Mm. So, like they were able to make those jumps and do that. Uh, like I can't really think of anyone I know who has become successful without a lot of networking. And mm. the thing with networking is you have to work with some unsavory people uh at times because it's typically not at least personally my type of people who become uh leaders of industries and stuff so i have to essentially either demean myself or follow someone else's commands if i wish to rise up and that's why sometimes I just get the urge to just try to, I don't know, destroy everything and like create my own thing. Mm -hmm. but, but that's a whole different, <laughs> different experience right there. Thank you. Uh, here's one from Tesla Bo. Uh, when you're in a bad mood, how do you respond to people saying calm down? I get angrier. <laughs> uh, I mean, that that's like probably one of the worst things because like <laughs> I don't I don't just get like set off like easily like normally like when I get into like a bad mood. It's normally because mm -hmm. I think everyone in my environment is being stupid or they're doing they're wasting time we're doing meaningless things um because for me like that that's probably the thing that gets me angry most often i just hate i hate wasting my time um so when i'm like in an environment where i don't know i came to a party with a group of friends one of us brought a car and now i'm just sitting there and everyone's i don't know they're talking about something stupid or whatever that starts to really bother me because then I'm like, I will, I could be home and I could be working right now. Uh, and like, and I think that when you tell me to calm down that you're kind of just telling me that like why I'm upset doesn't matter. Uh, and yeah, that's not really cool you know <laughs> that's like that's like a double whammy hit on your extroverted ethics and introverted intuition that one they're disregarding your feelings and then that it actually does not matter it's not important and that's yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> mm. nice. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Calm down. It's, I actually don't really know anything that calms me down, if I'm being honest. But mm. if you directly tell me to calm down, I can guarantee I will not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's another one. Do you like Kanye West? <laughs> I mean, I think Kanye West is an interesting guy. Uh, I think he's pretty, he's pretty radical, but I think that a lot of his ideas aren't really fleshed out at all. Like mm -hmm. he, go, he goes out with like half baked ideas a lot and then mm -hmm. he promotes those and you have to kind of like fill in the blanks to understand what he was trying to say. But if he would just research a little bit more, which he has millions of dollars, so he definitely could. Mm -hmm. uh, so I find him to be more entertaining as a public figure than like anything serious. Okay. Well. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's see. Anything else? Here's one from Laura. Have you noticed that you need to prepare for new activities before you can go right into them? For example, warm up before doing something active or energize yourself before, before presenting? Um, I'm going to be honest, I hate new activities. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not like, I'll venture out. And like once I'm actually doing stuff, like I can just like get into the groove of it. But mm -hmm. I'm normally hesitant to even get into situations where I could be perceived in a certain way as like just being incompetent, not knowing what I could do. Mm -hmm. But before those situations, I'll normally read up as much as I can about it just so like I at least have the surface level superficial knowledge. Uh, I guess that's kind of a warm up, a mental warm up. I don't know uh, if you mean like physical activities. Because uh, with those, I typically just throw myself right in. I kind of trust myself when it comes to those things. It's when it's a uh, mental. Uh, stuff that requires you to be more pragmatic, I guess, uh, is where I would definitely need to warm up before doing it. Uh, because I have to get into a mindset where like, I'm not really caring about the atmosphere around me and I just have to get things done. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I think I answered it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is there anything else here? Let's see. Any other questions? Hmm. I think those, I think those are all the questions. Maybe I've missed some. If anyone's asked a question, I've missed it. Just post it down at the bottom, just so I can find it again. Um, yeah, no, I think it's often hard to find all the questions in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, here we go. What kind of music does he like? Um, I have. I have the Nirvana Angels tattooed on my chest, uh, so I like Nirvana. Grunge is a grunge rap. Uh, I I even like the '60s rock. Um, I guess if I were just to do a top five uh, in no particular order, it would be Nirvana, The Doors. Um, 
John Lennon solo work. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tupac and Guns N' Roses. Mm. Uh, but I listen to anything like because like I don't like to really like confine myself. Spiritually though, I feel very connected to the punk movement. I feel like that's something the world needs again. What is it about the punk movement that created that spiritual alignment for you? Because just like the energy of being out on the stage, you know, you, you go, because punk essentially evolved from that Bob Dylan quote, all you need is uh, three chords and the truth. Um, and I like what I liked about punk is that you have these guys who may not be technically proficient, but they're putting all their emotion, their anger, their sadness into it. So even if it's not uh, technically good, it's raw. And to me, that's like 10 times better than the journeys and stuff like that, because these guys are they're not making music to be commercial. They're making it to express themselves. And then everyone just came together and was like, you know what? I think the government sucks too. I think this sucks too. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think that that's really cool. Fantastic. Uh, um, Jordy wants to ask if you have Discord. <laughs> I, I do have a Discord. <laughs> I don't remember the username. I'll have to give it to you sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one from Fate. What values and characteristics do you like to see in your partner or girlfriend? Um, <laughs> this question always gets me because I think it just makes me sound like narcissistic. Um, but like I talk a lot, so she would preferably be quieter than me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because I, I could just see that being a problem. Um, she would also be smart. I'm a sucker for smart, <laughs> for smart girls. Um, okay, give me one second. Um, I need to just uh, get all the superficial things out of my head. <laughs> Because when I answer these questions, I always answer the way everybody would answer, like, oh, wow, she should be cute, smart. But, like, who's not going to say that? Who's going to say I want a stupid, ugly partner? Uh, so I think uh, strong, strong and determined are the things I look for. Like, she should have ambition. Um she, uh, like most girls that I know, they are very content with just being housewives or just, uh, and there's nothing wrong with being a housewife. There's uh, nothing wrong with being a nurse or any of those things. But to me, those, I like people who kind of like strike out of the mold, who who don't just go directly into that, who keep their individuality. I think it takes a very strong person to do that. Uh, a lot of people I know around my age who are in college be, and they're becoming like psychologists and nurses, they're doing it more so because it's it's uh, trendy and they don't really know what to do. And it's the safe classic choice. Yes. Uh, and I would want a girl who independently, I don't know, maybe she's a mechanic, I mean, that's not really a glamorous job, but it's different. And it shows that like she's following her passions. Uh, and then she wouldn't be um, a slob. Uh, <laughs> I like people who uh, are very well put together. They like to maintain uh, their appearance active outdoorsy maybe and yeah i think most of all just like willing 
<laughs> not okay. Willing isn't the word. Capable of helping me to shape my own visions and each other's and mold them together. I always say for me, the ideal relationship is when two independent people choose to be dependent on each other and not when it's one independent and one codependent, which is what mm. most people do. So, yeah. <laughs> must say, uh, quiet, strong, and determined sounds relatively LSI-ish to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Leah is asking, are you familiar with Enneagram yet? If so, what do you expect your type to be? I think I um, <laughs> when I've I've taken uh, it before, my type typically jumps between uh, three or four, depending on when I take it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought three. <laughs> yeah. So it, it basically three depends. Wing four, huh? Three wing four. Yeah. It's either three wing four or four wing three. That's what I always test as, depending on the day. So <laughs> I, I would say three wing four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Oh, and I normally test as a sexual social. <laughs> awesome. Mm. That's always there. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> There's also quite often those for EIEs that can be sexual leading with social as well in there. Um, let's see. Anything else? Another one from Laura. How do you react when you feel someone has done you injustice? I think that they should be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's my immediate reaction. My immediate reaction is we need to take care of that issue immediately. Mm -hmm. um, because they're if they are willing because i don't go out of my way to make enemies so if you become an enemy of me that means you're an enemy of my ideas and if you're an enemy of my ideas that means that later on you could come back mm. and you could pose a threat and typically what i would do is i I get all my friends and all my people because if you're a threat to me, oh, I, I kind of apply it to them too. But if you're a threat to me, then you're a threat to all of us. Because if I'm gone, then they lose, they lose their vision, their visionary. But <laughs> I, I do the same thing for them. If they're gone, then I lose them. And I think that's like how you should be. If someone commits an injustice against one of us, it's all of us. They want to hurt all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I can normally be convinced to, if the person is willing to apologize and prove that they didn't have ill intentions, then I can, I can normally pretty easily accept them back but i mean they kind of are always kind of in the doghouse because once the trust is gone i don't ever i've never fully given it back to anybody so they're mm -hmm. never going to be able to be as close or as well esteemed in the group as they once were right but they can oh. okay <laughs> think of anything else. Yeah, I think there was something. Ooh. Ah, here's one from Geordie. Do you feel like you can get lost in your identities? Um 
yeah it's i i frequently struggle with what i like actually am at my core like uh especially just when it comes to like previously like when i was like out on the streets because i was kind of like a punk i like was very prone to conflict and stuff but before that when i was still in high school i was a like writing poetry and stuff in class. And then I was like, you know, am I, am I like this really sensitive guy or am I like this, like a moral beast that like just doesn't care about who he hurts. And even right now, currently I struggle with like, uh, like I can accept I, that it's all a part of me um, and that it all makes me one person, but what comes into play is that I feel as if, uh, like I wonder which side gets me what I want because like, it's not a frequent thought, but I'll be like, wow, when I was like a really like, douche mean guy like a lot of people listen to me a lot more did than they do now i felt i was way more in control uh mm -hmm. i was like and that felt much more natural but i mean the same thing happened when i was a douche i was like when i was nicer to people it just felt so much better and i felt like people loved me more and so i guess i kind of just i do I do wonder, and I, I'm constantly trying to fuse the identities in the one, find out like where that perfect middle is. But I always, at any time, I tend to lend, lead, uh, lead towards my um, kinder side at the moment a lot for at least like the past year or so. But like, sometimes that comes at the expense of almost being a pushover. So then I feel like to balance it out, I have to go back into being more aggressive. So yeah, I guess I do get lost. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what takes priority for you, friends or family? Uh, um, my friends are my family, so I, I guess a better way for me to divide that would be uh, family or acquaintances. Um, I would pro I would I would do anything for my sisters. Um. It, like if it was needed to help them progress in life, then I'd very, very, very easily do that. But like, I don't believe in just like, and it's not just because they're my sisters that it's like that though, because there's other people that I, in my family that I wouldn't do that for. Um, but it's because of proven times that they have helped me on my path and they've helped like my group of friends out. Like if you're helping me and my friends, then I have to be willing to help you out. Uh, so it's not like, oh, I was born into this family or I was brought here. So I'm just inherently loyal to you. No, uh, I don't believe in being loyal to anything that I didn't choose to be loyal to. So, yeah. Thank you. I think those are all the questions we have time for. Do you have any last thoughts, Zadaska, before we finish this video? Uh, 
yeah so when it comes to um i just want to clarify this final thing when it comes to lsi versus esi how does one go about telling mm. that difference or like what like environments because like there's a lot of times where i'm just completely wrong with those kind of people yeah that's the thing they they're known as lookalikes and they do have that similar sort of very sort of stable but sometimes steely energy to them often difficult to tell them apart i think at the end of the day you got to think about what are they looking for what are they reacting well to you for is it because of the extroverted logic is it because of the extroverted ethics are they looking for you know and is it the fact that they're not quite sure how they're coming across to others uh, how to deliver things in the right sort of way and they want that sort of more positive emotional feedback is that what the end of they're looking for or are they someone who's looking for information are they looking for someone who they trust enough to um treat as a reliable source of information for knowing how things work i think look at it in terms of the suggestive functions and i think you'll, you'll do better than you know and again caught up with the similarities in the creative and the mobilizing and the demonstrative which will come across quite clear you could also look at the leading function but esis can often find themselves doing a lot of introverted logic because they need to and the same way for lsis they need to when they because they when they approach people they're more able to use their introverted ethics than their extroverted ethics so i think okay. look at the suggestive function what are they looking for what are they requiring from you okay yeah well that that answers that uh is are there and also when it comes to eie where would you recommend looking like reading up on it at reading up about eie yes well i know i have my profile which i wrote which some people are quite complimentary of beyond that i would say it's more a question of learning and looking at different examples on our group we've typed a lot of people eie perhaps more than any other types you've got a quite large benchmark over uh, i think over 100 eies now so i would say looking at videos of them seeing how they manifest in different ways to really understand how ei can come across seeing what the trends and patterns are as you noticed what they do with their lives what they you know what they achieved or what has been successful for them where, where they failed i think for more specific questions you can always ask me if it comes to you just send me an email I'm happy to respond all right yeah all right that sounds good then <laughs> Great. So it, I've already added, I've added you to the Facebook groups. Just go to photos, albums, then EIE. You've got a fictional EIE one, then an actualist EIE one. And you'll get a good gallery of everyone there who we've, who we've benchmarked. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely have to start reading up on that. Okay. Yeah, that was, this was really helpful, Jack. <laughs> and yeah looking forward to interacting with you in the future as well uh, we're going to have an eie hangout at some point i'd love for you to be, be a part of it we're just having difficulty with them at the moment it's like herding cats <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i'll be down whenever it happens great <laughs> i'll have my friend cat reach out to you then anyway have a lovely rest of your day and thank you everyone for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.